Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today we're going to be making a pattern called Usagi, and that means rabbit or bunny in Japanese. And they're really cute little appliqued bunnies. Now, this is something I don't usually do. I don't usually make the pattern with the exact fabrics that are showing on it, but I have all these fabrics and it just looks marvelous. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pick out those exact fabrics. layer cake for the bunnies and a layer cake for the backgrounds. So this is the layer cake. This is designed by Debbie Maddie, same lady who designed the cute pattern, and it's called Machi, and it's all these beautiful indigo prints. And then we're going to use solid white squares for the backgrounds. And we've got all the yardage on the bolt here. This is what we're going to use for the outside border, just beautiful. We're going to use this for some cornerstones and we'll use this for sashing and we'll pick the binding at the very end. So grab your prints and let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is steam press all of our layer cake squares. Now the pattern calls for yardage for your squares but since the layer cake is already cut to the right size, that will save us a lot of time. And we are going to trim those down after we applique. So I like to steam press everything severely because I'm going to use fusible. I'm gonna fuse these cut pieces onto the background and you want everything pre-shrunk as much as possible. So use a lot of steam and get everything ironed nice and flat. Everything is steam pressed, nice and flat, and I've divided up, I've got 20 of the layer cakes here and 20 over here, so we'll do the, the rabbit bodies from these, and the other ones we'll do the feet and the ears. So I have some fusible product, I have some Pellon that we will use to fuse to the back of the applique pieces. So this is the Wonder Under product. And there's different products you can use. I like this. Um, this is the heavy duty. It's got glue on this side and the other side is nice and smooth. So we're going to put this over the pattern pieces and trace around them. So I'm gonna place the pattern under here and I'm just gonna use a pencil and lightly draw all the way around the bunny body. And I might even put a little light line here so I know where the center of the block is. That'll make it easier for me to place this onto the background. Now I'm going to just cut a little bit bigger than I need. And we're going to fuse this onto the back side of one of our blocks. Now we'll take one of our colored pieces here and I've got the glue side, it's kind of the bumpy side, down and I've got it on the back side. I better flip it over. There's the back side. I'm gonna fuse this to the back side of this fabric. Now I have this fancy iron and it will fuse it really, really quickly, but you have to follow the manufacturer's instructions. You may need to put a press cloth over this. Just make sure it's nice and glued on. Now we're just going to cut right along the exact line there. Now I'm gonna use a nice smooth cut and just go all the way around this circle here. So even though I didn't draw it quite as neatly as I could have, I can still cut it nice and smooth. Once you get all the way around, you wanna peel off the paper backing. Sometimes you have to crinkle it a little bit to get it loose, but once you get it started, you can peel off the paper and the fusible is what's left on here. So this will eventually, once we get all the rabbit pieces cut, this will go on here and this is the glued area and we will fuse that onto the background. Now I'm gonna draw the ears and I'm just gonna continue drawing pieces and fusing them onto the colorful blue fabrics until we have all the pieces for the whole quilt. Okay. 
all of the pieces are drawn onto the fusible now, and I've got some of them broken apart here. So you can put multiple pieces onto one layer cake here. So I've got two bunny bodies, then I've got a set of ears, and they will all fit on here. So that will maximize my use of the fabric here. So I'm just gonna kind of glue them in place with no steam, and then steam press it on. Now, because there's five different bunnies, I went ahead and labeled the back of each um, piece here, bunny number one, bunny number two, so that I can cut in bulk, but then I can sort the pieces with, with which bunny they go with and not get everything all mixed up. Here's all of the parts for one of the bunnies. It doesn't look much like a bunny yet, but these all have their fusible on the back side. The paper has been torn off. Now we want to take our background square and fold it in quarters. So it's in half here and I'm just making a little line in the middle with my fingernail. Then we're going to fold it the other way. Just right in the middle. We just want those little creases to show so we can tell where the center of this background is. And then we are going to put those two lines on top of the lines that are drawn on the pattern. That way we can get this centered up perfectly. Now we can put our pieces on and I can see right through the background so I can tell exactly where these are going to go. Once you have everything in place, you can just slide this right off and then if you touch it a little bit with a hot iron, it will kind of temporarily glue everything into place. And then when you press your steam, things won't blow out of the way. Now it's all ready to be stitched. I've done some practice stitching, and I recommend you do this before you start applicating so you can decide what stitch do you want to do. I'm going to do a zigzag stitch. And this here also points out why you might want to use a press cloth when you are fusing your appliques on. In case your iron has some um, something on it, that might end up on your applique. So a press cloth is a cloth you can buy, or it's an extra piece of fabric that you can cover up your appliques with before you steam press them. So I'm going to use a zigzag stitch. So let's pretend this is what I'm stitching on. So if this is my thread, I am going to want to have the needle come right outside the applique piece with a lot of it going over the applique piece. Now I'm exaggerating, but you don't want to be going in here and you don't want to be going out here. You want your needle right here and then covering up a lot of the applique. I'm working on my Singer Patrick machine. This is a basic sewing machine, but it does have zigzag and a lot of other stitches. So I'm gonna use the zigzag stitch, which is number three, and I'm using a stitch width of 2.5 and a stitch length of 0.8. So that's what I practiced with, and that's what we're gonna use here. Now, before we start, we need to put some stabilizer underneath. You can either use copy paper or I also use newsprint. Newsprint is a little bit thinner and it's a little bit easier to tear off after we applique. So that just goes under here to make sure that this doesn't distort as we stitch. I'm going to start right up here where the ear comes in. And I'm going to try to go slow and smooth here. I'm going to stop right when I get to the ear and I'm just going to keep the needle down and pivot and now I'm going to go around this ear piece. Now the points are going to be a little tricky because I can't smoothly go all the way around that corner very easily so I'm going to go real slow and I've got my machine set so that the needle will stop down every time. And I'm going to have to lift the presser foot and pivot a little as I get close here. And I'm going to have to keep pivoting. 
try to have that needle stop on the outside and keep pivoting a little at a time. And it's okay if your ear's a little pointy. It is a bunny ear. They're probably a little bit pointy in real life. And once you get around the corner, you can speed up again. Now we're coming to where we started here. And I'm only going to take a couple extra stitches so I don't get too much thread right there. Just kind of hold it in place so it locks it. And then we can pull that off. And then I'm not going to cut my threads. I'm just going to go right over here and start around the bunny body again. Now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go around the ear. I'm ready for the nose. And this is a piece that is big enough where I can keep curving the whole way around. I probably, probably won't have to pivot much. But just try to keep turning it so your stitches are perpendicular to your cut edge. Now we're ready for the feet. I left the feet for last because I have a little more practice doing this stitching now because the feet are going to be challenging. I recommend you try a couple of feet on a practice cloth first, which is what I did. And they're still a little bit difficult. So I'm going to start and stop this direction up next to the body here. Now, if you're not sure where your needle's going to hit, feed it by hand a couple of stitches. See, my needle was too far, my fabric was too far over. That's about where I want it. So I'm just going to go very slow and curve a little and then do a lot of pivoting. If you can slow your machine speed down, you might want to do that. So just a couple of stitches. You might even want to feed this by hand. And just get around the best you can there. You will improve as you do more. Once you have all the applique done, you're going to want to turn this over and then trim off all of the threads that are on the back side. The reason we want to trim them off is because I've got dark thread on the bobbin and I don't want any of these threads showing once we um, make the quilt. Now, this paper rips off really easily and that's partially because it's thin paper, but it's also because I used a nice tight zigzag stitch. So take off all of the paper then we'll probably iron it up a little bit and then we'll make the rest of our appliques. Now there may be a slight bit of paper left under your stitching. Sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't, but that is not gonna hurt anything. I don't worry about trying to get that out. All right, there's one bunny down. I'm gonna applique all the rest. I've got 19 more to go. They're all appliqued now, so let's lay them out and see what the quilt's gonna look like. It was so much fun doing the bunnies. Um, I will say, I got better as I went, and by the time I had done about three bunnies, they were getting a lot easier. So if you do one and it seems very difficult, that's okay, stick with it. Just do a couple more, and you really get the hang of doing those little teeny feet. These bunnies are just so cute, I can hardly stand it. So I'm gonna switch around a little bit so my colors are balanced. Then I will cut the cornerstones, the sashing. I'll get that outside border on, and I want to get this on the quilting machine. We've got the whole quilt top done, and it's on the machine. And I'm going to use a very light colored thread because I don't want it to show in the background. I think either the light blue or the gray won't show too much in the rabbits and hardly shows at all. I think the light blue will be the best, so that's what we're going to go with. I'm going to quilt this in the ginkgo leaf meander. I think that will look very interesting. It has a little bit of a Japanese flair and I think that will match with the fabrics that are in here. So it's ready to start. So the machine will come over. It'll go right to the beginning of the first row and then we can see what it's gonna look like.
I have the Usagi quilt all finished up. I like the wide borders on it. This is a nice large scale print. It just frames the bunnies very nicely. And the closer you get, you can see the little detail, their little feet, the little, the little tails on them. A lot of cute little details that just make this quilt so special. I quilted it in a fairly open design here. This is a ginkgo pattern. And I've got the borders fussy cut. So I took the yardage and cut the border the long way so that I could center this pattern along the borders. I thought that looked a lot better. It's quilted in that light blue. You can really not see the quilting on the back at all, but that lets the fabric prints just shine through. Really easy to make and very satisfying. Thanks for watching our tutorial today on how to make the applique bunny usagi quilt. We hope you enjoyed it. Now, we're having another giveaway. We're going to be giving away three runners to three different people. So you have three chances to win. We've got this nice Sister's Choice Joe Morton prints from Moda. We've got another Sister's Choice here, and this is in Americana colors, Penny Rose, really fun. And we also have one in the Kaleidoscope Holiday Flourish. So it's very easy to enter. All you do is click the link below that says giveaway, enter your email address and your name, and you could be the lucky winner. If you don't want to miss any of our tutorials, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy quilting!